Welcome. Today we're talking Donald Trump. He is in the election as we speak, August the 4th, as a contender for the next president of the United States of America. And we're going to look at why he won the 2016 election in a very quick way. I'm going to tell you why this chart for his solar return looks really bad for him potentially winning the election this fall. But he also has superior strength in other areas of his chart. I'm going to mention a bit about why I think neither Kamala Harris nor Donald Trump, if they're both in the running by that time, will be the winners of the election at first to do with the Jupiter refrainment. And we're also going to take a look at the idea of what Donald Trump's role in the collective is at this time, as he is in an election year in which we can pretty well see things are not going to go as planned. It will not necessarily look like there's a winner decreed. If there's a winner, there's a debate about who is the winner. And there's even the possibility, remote as it may seem, in a delay of the election itself, which is really a shock. Whew. But we're going to talk Trump today. So this is called Talk Trump Update Election 2024. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Lori Lothian, Western Tropical Zodiac, Cold Sign Houses, a whole deal, ancient astrology tools and timing techniques. I'll be using a few of those today in the delineations ahead. One thing I want to say in the hot summer that I'm recording in is that, you know, Donald Trump faced an assassination attempt when Mars was on Algol with, with Uranus just recently. And I did declare that he would be under that harm's way duress, they even used the word assassination at risk of de-platformed here. Uh, and I said it would be likely be a week before or after July the 15th. Indeed, it was July 13th. I'm bringing it up again, because that Uranus on his algal, on his midheaven, squaring his body ascendant Mars is still happening for the next few months. He's not quite out of harm's way. It is ostensibly true that he may indeed face another challenge to his health and may not make it to the final election at the end of the day. I don't think I can use this fan without making the microphone sound horrible. So give me a minute while I stick it under my desk and at least try to make my legs feel better. Yeah, all right. Whew. Hope I didn't reveal any body parts there. So, so anyway, um, it, it's like the guy's still in harm's way. That's all I'm going to say. He's still not out of the woods. The south node's going through a part of the chart where his Neptune and the lot of poisoning exists. And there's a still strong possibility that he could die of some unknown cause that is called like, oh, he had a heart failure, something like that. But, you know, hey, let's not let's not be let's be realistic. Right. Let's be realistic. In today's world, people can die of seemingly natural causes, and the cause was completely unnatural. So the forces that would have tried to remove him from the election, I'm not a Democrat, I'm not a Republican, I'm a centrist in Canada, this is astrology, decease and desist in the comments, may still be working against him. And the angel, asteroid angel, like guardian angel, was traveling, which is on his natal moon, which is his, his prana and life force in his fifth house when he was born. The asteroid was traveling through his ascendant territory during the uh, assassination attempt with the, the asteroid Medusa for off of his head. But the asteroid angel was closer to his ascendant. And I did a video on that. And you can argue metaphorically in the cartoon of the simulation that he had an angel protecting him. Yeah. Okay. Just go with the possibility. As of this recording in August the 4th, J.D. Vance is still his running mate. J.D. Vance is bad press that's false about the sofa. Also, that's true about cat women running the country. He is not working well for the press. He's the most unliked polls wise vice president candidate in history, according to pollsters, whether that's true or not, you be the judge. This is unfortunate uh, for Donald Trump that he made this choice uh, under pressure from Elon Musk and Apparently, Elon Musk is his own sons. And I'm trying to remember who else was. There was a lot of pressure there. And it could be that he's going to make it change his mind. And why would Donald Trump change his mind without showing you the charts? Because Mercury is going to retrograde backwards now, August the 4th, through until the 15th, through his house of speech. So announcements that take something back. And then over his ascendant and his Mars changing his mind, a change of direction. Some people think that Donald Trump may not want to stay in the election after all, because Donald Trump is a sore loser. And if he thinks he may lose, he may say, I'm not going to stick around. I'm not feeling well. And uh, then if he doesn't, that's a huge energy. I don't even know where that what happens next. 
But I'm just trying to say there's such weird stuff going on for Donald Trump right now. And his chart in his lease, a very basic solar return, doesn't look good at all compared to what he had in 2016 when he slam dunked the election. So it is night and day, night and day for Donald Trump's chart. I hear some astrologers who are politically inclined who really want Trump to win, declaring him the winner. I hear astrologers who love Democratic stuff and they're Kamala lovers and they declare her the winner. I think that you're, a lot of people's uh, astrology is being contaminated by their political bias. And I'm trying my best to see this guy without any bias, given that I've never voted in any country, including the United States, where although I lived there, I was not a citizen. It makes sense. So we're going to pull up Donald Trump. Hang on. Let's just stop the share for a sec. And this is predictive astrology. This is not a video on your all signs, but I've got a lot of that out there. So go listen to some of the things that are out there, like the Mars-Jupiter conjunction, resetting your life in a way you haven't seen since 1989. It will probably be out before you see this video. My Patreon community gets this early access ad free. Do you want to learn astrology, predictive tools and techniques? Come study with me. I'm teaching those in September. This is an intermediate. This is an be advanced beginner course to read your chart, time your best life. I will be teaching advanced timing tools in astrology in the new year, probably in January. And I will be covering some really exotic and rare timing tools that I know work because I've used it. But if you've got to probably take that intro course or already be an astrologer, six weeks live with me, mid, mid very affordable, mid-September, jump aboard, get on the wait list for the early bird discount notice. The tuition cart is yet to open. When it opens, you will know about it. Okay, now let's get rolling. <laughs> let's talk Donald Trump. So let's start. We're going to look first at Donald Trump and his natal chart, just briefly to refresh you on the nature of the man called Donald Trump. When Donald Trump was born, he has his ascendant at 29 degrees of Leo. Leo 29 is a fixed star regulus. It's about little king, kingship, rulership, leadership, born to rule, little king, power, riches, glory, and more. This is his, his path. He's born for it. Ascendant is your identity. His ascendant is only conjunct the asteroid, by the way, the asteroid America, but it might be useful. I should put it in the asteroid Apollo. Apollo is a sun god. A sun god is a leader energy. So he's got this archetypal energy to be a leader, to be a sun god. And with the asteroid America on his ascendant, clearly a sun god, Apollo of America, right? That's so simple. It just makes sense. So you can see a little bit about the nature of Donald Trump immediately. And the little asteroids are the devil is in the details. Apollo is at 29 degrees on fixed star regulus on Donald Trump's ascendant. His birth time is accurate. This is who Donald Trump is. He's a warrior in the sense that he sees the world through win, lose, win, lose. You're a loser or you're a winner. He said, fight, fight, fight. That would be authentically a Mars ascendant character, especially in Leo, which is fire. He sees the world through the, the lens of who wins and who loses. And that's why it's also the art of the deal and all that stuff, because deal making is about finding a way to win your case by, you know, crafting the art of the deal. And finally, Pluto is with his Mars. This is kind of like a prenatal condition in whole sign houses. It's above the horizon. It's above the ascendant. It's in the top of the sky. In fact, these are heralds, right? The sun would rise this way, right? In this direction. So his sun would travel all the way around and then rise here. And these are the planetary bodies above the horizon. In some ways to me, this is like other lives. He's been Mars Pluto. He's been war and death, death and war, not his first rodeo, death, war, America, sun leader. He's a former leader involved in war in the United States, quite possibly based on some of his uh, things he said, maybe the Civil War. Okay. And the other thing I would mention about Donald Trump as a just a broad thought here, um, there's this essence here of what is called your oriental planet, the planet that rises before the sun. So you would just take the sun and imagine the sun going this way to swoop above the horizon. Uh, it, it's not, it's how it works. Just trust me. And really two things. If we use the outer planets, his oriental planet is Rahu, the North node Uranus, rebel, revolution, rule breaker, right? Disturber of the way things have been, breaking up stagnation in Gemini, 
the way things are communicated. And there's so many ways to look at that, okay? But if we keep swooping around and we keep waiting for a traditional planet, we get the moon. When your rising planet is the moon, your oriental planet is the moon, that's often gonna show a lot of change, like the phases of the moon in your career path. And he's had more than one career. He's been a TV celebrity. He's been a real estate developer. Now he's a, a, a politician. Lunar people with a moon above, like rising, before the sun, heralding the sun. I have that. I was a journalist. I was a, oh my God, I've had so many careers, it's embarrassing. I was a magazine editor. I've been um, a psychic full-time reader and psychic, I talk to dead people medium. I've been a remote viewer. I've been an astrologer. So lunar people not only have many features to do with career that changed, but his moon is a part of that. And it is a full moon. And it is a moon that is a part of an eclipse cycle for when he was born, he was born during eclipse. And so the moon in its fullness is a big energy, guys. It's huge. And so quite often it represents popularity, mass appeal with the people. And that's a part of his trajectory in life. Now, the angel asteroid is on his moon. I didn't draw it in. Okay. Along with Cupido or Eros, which is a whole other story about his mom relationship. But his moon is literally with that angel asteroid. And the moon is the prana. It's what animates the body. So life force, the breath of life, the spirit left the body when someone died, the spirit entered the body at birth or whenever it enters a body, six weeks on, eight weeks on. And the prana life force that man animates the body, the soul, right? The soul is conjunct the asteroid angel when he's born. He's got life force protection, angelically, you could argue here, south node past lives. And when an asteroid angel was crossing his ascendant, it's kind of like seemed like the reason that the bullet clipped his ear instead of hit his head is the reason for that. Now, there is a really funny video that I came across, and I'm just going to share it with you the best I can, because it made me laugh. And we're way too serious. We are way too serious. We are way too serious these days about life. Nobody is laughing anymore. So if you want a good laugh, I'm going to share this with you just very clumsily. And it's a, it's a funny Donald Trump mean about getting clipped on the ear. And it really lightened my day. And it's by an impersonator who's brilliant. Okay, so let me share that with you. So I'm going to just change my mic and move it in the direction of my laptop. And hopefully that gives you decent sound. Okay. And it's just making me laugh. Okay. So let me make it a better view. Is this the greatest impersonation of Donald Trump on the internet? You've been warned. You can take my ears, but you cannot take my liberty. They want to cut off my ears like the Taliban, but what they don't know is my ears can grow back like SpongeBob through budding, by the way. Hit me with your best shot, why don't you? Because if that's the best you got, you're a loser. You're such a loser, you missed so bigly. By the way, you had a big opportunity. You could have made my head blow up on TV, but you didn't do that, did you? Now my ear is going to grow back bigger and better. It will have better hearing. I will hear like an owl. I want you to vote. Isn't that funny? Uh, isn't that funny? I mean, maybe. Oh, oh, yeah. Isn't that funny? Maybe it's just me, but it made my day because it was so lighthearted. And, you know, it was just such a perfect caricature of Donald Trump. So that was just, and I'm not pro Tom and Trump, actually, trust me, but it just was funny. So it clipped his ear and I was talking about the angel and the asteroid angel and, you know, the whole deal, right? So now what I'm going to do is go back to his chart before we talk about this solar return in 2016 and 2000 and this one coming up. There are multiple charts. There are progression, secondary and uh, solar arc. There are perfection ages. There's so many ways to look at his chart. But if you were just to go simple, Keep it simple, stupid, and look at his solar return this year. You're going to have some doubts, okay? This is Donald Trump again. I told you a bit about him, who he is and why he is. There's a midheaven on Algol, a star of wealth, and he is wealthy, but a star of also you know, losing one's head. He lost his head. He didn't win the election. It was stop the steal. You heard the whole thing. You know, We were all there. Whether he won or didn't want it was stolen or not, I don't know. But I mean, he lost his titular head of the country. And also, you can see that he has his North Node on his son in Gemini. And that should bode well for the election, don't you think? Because why? Because Jupiter is in Gemini. And shouldn't he win again 
No, because Jupiter is trundling along and going to retrograde at 21 degrees of Gemini in October and refrain from meeting his uh, son. It's like close, but not quite. Jupiter will cross over his Rahu before refraining backwards and Rahu can be about intense volume up amplification of Jupiter's stories. Jupiter is going to turn retrograde and the past comes to the now and something big is happening in the month of drum roll, please October. This same Jupiter refrenation in October is also going to impact Kamala Harris negatively her 24 degrees rising ascendant degree Gemini is also being approached by Jupiter who backs off before perfecting the connection to either Trump's son or Kamala's ascendant as if they are neither going to be declared a winner before this election at this election time for some reason. It could be a draw. My video coming out on RFK or now just behind this video, I think, is about is RFK a disruptor, a spoiler? Does he take enough votes away that neither Kamala Harris nor Donald Trump get the 270 required electoral votes, in which case the Congress, like the House of Representatives and the Senate, have to do this long, elaborate process. It could take several months to come to terms with who they're going to choose as the winner. So that's one weird way it could occur. There have been times in history where neither party has been declared a winner. So I believe, yes. So like hanging chats, Gore versus Bush, and we had to wait for the results. There was also one in the 1876 time period. There's been a few. And so it's not the first time there's been a delay. And a lot of astrologers say a delay in the election. I'm not sure if it's a delay in the election or a delay in the actual results from the election, for example. That seems to me more likely, like there's a 2000 Gore-Bush narrative. That's my feeling. Could be wrong. We shall see. You know, that Mars, Jupiter, that Saturn, Jupiter conjunction of December 2021, which can bring the death of kings and the old Tecumseh curse or whatever. That's a long story. I'll be covering it in another video. It's also the same as the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn in 2000, at the year 2000, which was connected to that hanging Chad election failure. So we may see an election problem, basically. And we'll be doing a video on the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction in more depth uh, coming up because we're in the opening square this summer. Okay, so we got the lay of the land here, right? We're getting a vibe, you know, we're gonna gonna go through now what's next. And by the way, Donald Trump, you know, the guy who has, you know, his current wife, Melania, nowhere in sight. I mean, Donald Trump's relationship with his wife at this point seems to be quite transactional. And there's a way to find out first wife, second wife, third wife. And if we go with Melania being his real third wife, like long-term wife partner, um, which I believe she is, then that would be that would be the sun in his chart right here. And that's not a good place for him right now because Jupiter will refrain from reaching the sun. But we'll, we'll do a whole video on Donald Trump's marriage life at another time, okay? Um, because I'm sure I'll come up with the reason that Melania is basically persona non grata. She's like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to get involved this time. I'll just be your wife somewhere in the background. Now, Hang on. Yeah. So ha- this is what we're doing. We're going to move into the solar return chart. I'm going to keep it simple. This is not a long thing. I'm going to show you the solar return in 19, the election of 2016. And then we're going to go ahead to show you this one. And then I'm going to show you what the two massive differences are, like compare and contrast. And I may do another video. I may do another video. And that has a lot to do with the progression secondary, the progression solar arc, um, the, distri- the zodiacal releasing, the distributions through the balance. That's an advanced long video. I might, I might not because it's not really mm, everyday people centric uh, for what YouTube wants me to put out there these days. Trust me. Okay. In 2016, June 13th, Donald Trump had his solar return. In that year, Donald Trump was turning the age of <clears throat> brain come back online. When was he born, guys? He's 70 something then. He's in his third house age, that much I know. So he must be 
74. So he was 74 years old in 2016 when he was running for the presidency. Does that sound about right to me? I have to double think because I don't do math. Oh my God. I have no left brain when I'm doing videos. Let me give it, get me the, the date, how old the guy was again. Donald Trump was 70. He's born in 1946. It's 2016. He's 70 years old. We call the age of 70 in the, the ancient tradition of annual perfections in which every age is a house of your chart and a sign of your chart. That's his 11th house age. Now, he's going to try to win an election. He's 70 years old. He's in his 11th house age, ruled by Mercury in his domicile. And this is a strong year for Donald Trump every 12 years. It happens again at 82. Go 12 years from 70 and keep on going and go backwards in time. And he would have had positive years. And in the election year, the movement of Mercury was favoring him. And I won't go back into all the details details of that in 2016. But understand the age of the 11th house is about celebrity, about high noon recognition, about his career, about being popular and appealing, about being lucky, Venus, about being a good speaker, about having a lot of speech and popularity and appeal in a celebrity and top of the house sky. And he got a lot of news coverage, right? A lot as he was running for that election. And so ultimately, this was a powerful perfection age ruled by Mercury at the time of the election. And this is the energy of the solar return chart. So when he, what I'm trying to say here is he was in his 11th house age. Let me go back to his natal chart for you. I was, sorry. He was in his 11th house age right here. And he was in a solar return year in which the 11th house was highly activated. And that's because ultimately you're going to see 11th house age powerful stories, sudden, shocking, expanding leadership abilities ruled by Mercury. And when you look at the solar return chart, you're going to notice something interesting. And I'm going to do an overlay. You'll notice that it's also an 11th house Mercury rule solar return story. This is because Donald Trump is coming back in that year to a Leo ascendant. It's just like coming home to his total promise from his incarnational strategy. You have a handful of these in a lifetime. I have a handful of these in a lifetime. This is my Aquarius rising solar return. When this happens in my life at this age of 62, when you go back home to your solar return ascendant, you are coming into a true north alignment and it is a fortunate year for most people. So in the sky, we see that his ascendant at 29 Leo is being matched by his ascendant at four degrees of Leo for the temporary birthday age of 70 years old. The solar return is when the sun returns to its degree. It's Saturday when you were born. He was born with the sun at 22 degrees and 55 minutes. It's back at 22 degrees and 55 minutes of the sign of Gemini. And it depends, of course, on where you live, but we don't cast a solar return chart in the ancient tradition for your new location. We recast it for the place of your birth. Now, this ascendant is conjunct Pluto, wealth, riches, and power. And yes, tyrant, autocrat, and dictator, sure. But whichever way you want to look at it, he was coming into the ascendancy of power because of this overlap in the election year of 2016. There are so many ways this chart looks good on him, not the least of which is Mercury in domicile, Venus for popularity, and the sun overlapping his natal sky. What a winning combination. You can't make this stuff up at all. It's powerful. Born with Apollo and the sun god on his ascendant, in the solar return chart, in his 10th house of career and reputation, connected and conjunct his algal wealth, midheaven, natal midheaven. Like, it's like, wow. So he's rising to sun god status, appears to be. It looks like the chart in 2016 of a winner. Like, it's unbelievably strong. I can't imagine he would lose. And in fact, I predicted he would win because this is what this chart looked like. And I predicted he would lose in the other the election of 2020 for a lot of reasons. Now, one of the things going on here is that in this solar return chart, you can do what is called perfecting by month. So let's just simplify it for a minute and go back to the basic solar return chart. Nothing but the solar return chart, okay? In the solar return chart, all by its lonesome, 
with nothing else to consider, we notice that his birthday is in June and you can perfect the months from the sun or and or the ascendant. Let's start with the ascendant and we'll go all of the month of June. All of the month of July is the second house. All of the month of August is the Libra third house. We know what he was doing in the Libra third house during the actual stumping for the election, the year of the election. He was on his MAGA rallies. He was traveling all over the place. He was busy making sure people heard what he had to say, how he wanted to make America great again. And that is indicative of a popular travel about the country, short distance travel to communicate in August. Remember, we went June, July, August with Venus supporting right, her house in the house of celebrity and great gains and popular appeal for over groups of people. No brainer. This was going to be the month of August where he would succeed. If we protect perfected from the sun three months, we would go. Sun is a month of Ju June. July is the 12th house. And yes, August is his Leonine ascendant temporarily active overlapping with his natal ascendant. And we get a story of a lion man with big hair standing in front of a crowd with golden makeup, talking MAGA and getting the crowd to cheer. It's the red hats. Red hats is Martian energy. He's got them wearing red Martian hats. So can't make this stuff up. It's exactly how it was playing out. Then we have to move forward from August to September and then to October and then to November, perfecting from his ascendant right? Let's do it again. June, July, August, September, October, November, right? He's in a sixth house of work. Being the president is a job with Pluto in a trine to the sun god Apollo in the 10th house of the solar return conjunct the mid heaven of his natal chart. So he's going to be a in an energetic on the election month of becoming a 2016, a powerful sun God. At the same time, if we perfect from the sun and we go around the sky, right? We just time it like this, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Oops. Oh my God. Did I do that right? Yeah. Here's November. So we go again, June, July, August, September. Yes. November. What is November? Change of home, Right. It indicates that during the month of the election, there's a portent of a change of home. Mars, new home, change, cut and sever one home. A lot of fortune, a fortunate change of home. Yes, it's called the White House. And so we could see that he had all the hallmarks in the month of November of probably winning that election just by perfecting the sky. And his inauguration, therefore, if we perfect from the sun, he was being inaugurated in the Pluto Apollo sun god trine. And if we perfect from the ascendant in his eighth house, right? Count around with me. We go around the circle, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January. Inauguration was here. Now it's interesting. Inauguration day was in the month of January, perfecting from the sun. And you can see the energy of a wounded Chiron and a house of hidden things. And it's interesting to me because Chiron is close to inauguration day. It's on the 20th, you know, inaugurated Chiron is like 25. That's like the 25th of the month of, of January. So there was almost a baked in wound here. And, you know, you can say that the eighth house is the house of the esteem of others and the wound to how others esteemed him or lack of esteem of others as well, a loss of esteem. And he got teased for like looking at the eclipse. And then he had all that thing about was, you know, the, the peeing on the bed and the Russia gates and the, you know, all the weird stuff that went on. I mean, he was basically harassed by the mainstream press for much of his candidacy, uh, his, uh, his presidency in the first term there first four years. And I am not pro Trump. I just have witnessed what happens. I'm not pro Biden, pro Trump, pro Harris. I'm just neutral. Trust me. Now I would love a woman, woman in power. I don't, I don't know if I would love Kamala, but I love any woman in power. So, and I predicted a female president in multiple videos in including the March uh, solar ingress video. And so Trump is not a female. So I doubt that the, he is going to be the first female president in the United States, which makes me wonder if he might step down. I want to show you why he won back in the day. OK, that's all I wanted to show you there. I'm not going to show you why he lost in the 2020 election. But I want to talk about something interesting in my Saturn Jupiter synodic cycle video, because this is like the death and birth of kings. And 
no, I'm going to save that. But his is, but his, I know he did all this stop the steal and is that a bunch of bullshit, right? I don't know. But he faced an assassination attempt since 20, 2020, uh, Saturn Jupiter conjunction to the one that's coming up, like the next one. We're still in the cycle. And there's just something about that that when presidents are elected or in, in a, a Saturn Jupiter cycle, and that goes back to Lincoln and John Kennedy in 1960, they face the possibility of assassination. But Biden won the election. And it was Trump who faced the assassination from the Jupiter Saturn conjunction of 2020. And so it literally in the first opening square that we're experiencing coming up this summer on the middle of the month, it was the one who lost the election who was almost assassinated. This also hit other presidents, uh, this curse of the Jupiter Saturn from an, an Indian, Native American Indian who cursed the presidents. And it happens to occur most frequently on the um, on the even numbers like 1960, JFK was faced assassination. Lincoln face was assassinated. He was one of those presidents elected just after a Jupiter Saturn conjunction in a year in which that conjunction had just happened, like more than two or three years after Ronald Reagan faced assassination from the election of 1980. And yet also, and he didn't get assassinated, but it was near miss, right? Uh, George Bush, 2000 election with the Bush Gore hanging chads, someone lobbed a grenade at him and almost got him. Uh, rolled along under his foot or something. So the winning presidents of elections that occur in these dates on the zero mark, 1960, 2020, uh, 1980, uh, Lincoln and et cetera at all, often face death in office, death in office, not always assassination. Sometimes they get ill in office. And yet it was Trump who became an assassination target, not Biden, Although Biden is very ill and he still may pass before his term is up based on the curse. So we'll see what happens now. I don't think Biden's health is well. I've already predicted that. Now, I'm not smiling. I don't want anyone to die. I'm just telling you about this weird Indian curse on the presidents of the United States. Uh, and it seems to actually bear out. I'll be doing more about that curse in my Saturn video coming up soon. Uh, but I'm recording it with Adam Ellenbus. So we're going to move away from that and cast a solar return chart at this point for the election coming up. And then that's it, guys. This is a fast and dirty. I I don't need to overdo it. His progressions look terrible. His solar arc, secondary progressions look terrible. His zodiac releasing is a mixed bag. So, I mean, how many, you have to bludgeon everybody with astrology, right? I might indeed do that in-depth stuff later on as we approach the election. But I want to see, is he's pulling back on J.D. Vance or not? And if he's actually going to be the candidate for the election. Like at this point, I'm not sure that he doesn't quit or something or face another attempt on his life. Who knows? Uh, June the 14th, 1946, again, Donald Trump, just basic 101. Um, as I've been talking about him facing potential physical hardship and could he be uh, in harm's way, right? That's still Uranus in the real-time sky on his midheaven squaring his ascendant. That electrical charge is where he's in harm's way. Mars will be at zero degrees of Leo for the election, by the way, and Mars in the first house can cause people to have injuries. But before Mars gets there, <clears throat> Mars is spending time, September, October, in the sign of cancer. And that's Donald Trump's house of health challenges. It could lead to him being in a hospital. And then he goes into his first house, there's an election, then it goes back into cancer. So there's issues there that could cause Donald Trump significant challenges to his health before the election. That's my point. Now, solar return chart. Remember how he was a Leo Leo lining back up with his destiny in 2016. Is he lining up with his destiny this year? Nope. This is a solar return chart for his birthday of, uh, 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 wrong year. Don't look because you'll think he's going to be a solar leader. And it does look like he could be after June of 2025, not dead at all, but leading at the top of the sky. Who knows? A leader of a new social movement, a civil war, leader of some MAGA movement breaking away, half of Texas cleaving off from for the rest of the United States. Because I didn't mean to jump. I did not mean to jump to 2025 June, right? His birthday month at a year. But because the 10th house is lit, man, and so is Jupiter exalted in the 11th, there's something going very well for Donald Trump. Makes me don't think I don't think he will be killed this year. I mean, unless this is his afterlife and it's like wonderful. It looks like things are going extremely well. But South Node on his ascendant temporarily indicates some financial challenges and health challenges for him at the 2025 birthday point. Already. Now let's go back to the solar return that I meant to cast. 
which is the one that's coming up for the election. And it's, <laughs> I'm going to get this. I am going to get this. I'm going to get this. All right. I am going to get this to queue up for me. It is Mercury retrograde. I've been having the worst retrogradation problems that you've ever seen. Recently used chart, Donald Trump. I'm trying to queue his birthday in June of 2024. That's the only one we need. So let's try it one more time. I'm going to go to August, 2024. I'm choosing the nearest solar return. And here we have it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. What is he doing? He's a cancer rising. He's not really He's acting like a cancer rising. Okay, that's claws, protective, loyal, and fierce. You could use that. I think that Vance, by the way, might be a cancer rising. Um, I don't know if we have a birth time for him yet. Does anyone hear? But he's got lots of cancer rising vibe. But let's not go there yet. Let's just look at Donald Trump for a minute. His Leo ascendant is in the second house. This is a weak chart. This is his identity as a Leo nine being, is his ascendant, is in aversion to unable to witness the new identity of a cancerian, cancerian self. In his natal chart, cancer is his 12th house of hospitals, jails, and hidden enemies. In his ascendant in the second house of financial difficulties or challenges maybe, or just financial matters. This is the tenure and the energy of his ascendant energies. This I always don't look at as strong when your ascendant in your solar return is semi-sextile, the ascendant, your natal chart, or in an ancient tradition, unable to witness each other. It's like the natal version of him is not anything like able to collaborate with the version of him that's playing out in our heavens now. The good news is that his ascendant this year is on Sirius, the dog star, the son of the United States of America. The bad news is this powerful star for fame and wealth is also in the eighth house of the United States of America, indicating a house of death and difficulty as well. So, hmm. Also, what else can we say? There is a chironic wound in his 10th house of social status, public reputation, and, you know, career ascendancy. And it's amplified and volumed up by the North Node. Now, so far, so good, right? Guy almost gets shot, bounces up, fight, fight, fight. People, you know, are not hating on him too badly right now. So the reputation wound, I don't know what that might be. It could be the Vance picture. It could be the Project 25, 25, 2025. I don't know what this is about. We're going to time when that wound might appear for him. So we also notice he's got a stellium in the 12th house. Oh dear, right? The house of hidden enemies, self-undoing, um, self-sacrificing bad things going on or jails, or yeah, a hospital. So we don't want to see a stellium there, especially in an election year. It's not, it's not an ideal placement. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a pretty daunting thing. And the other element that I'm looking at is you could say, wow, mid heaven with conjunct Saturn, that could be about authority or stature, but it's in the ninth house. And that's the hand of the King. Like the King lives in the 10th and the hand of the King lives in the ninth. It's not a strong placement and a solar return for a winning year. And Neptune shows confusion, fog, or, uh, you know, illusion, delusion regarding his stature and reputation and ninth house matters involve courts and legal matters. So that could be the Supreme court justices and things going on with his legal affairs and some confusion there. And this could just be him winning maybe the nomination for the democratic, for the Republican party. Because when I think about institutional structures in government, that would be the Republican Party and that would be the Democrat Party. These are not the leaders. These are the structures that support the leaders to become the leaders. And he won the nomination. But why is there a wound in the career house? Why is Mars in his exile in de tough detriment, debility in the 11th house of popular and public opinion group leadership and celebrity and career gains, a weak placement in his 11th house does not help. Just to remind you, if I was to take Donald Trump's natal chart and put it around the ring, ring around the rosy, right? Look what you get here, just some overlaps, right? Some shocking upsets, of course, to his career, but we know that. That's the Sky Elgil story that got him also nearly assassinated. We can also see a mute Mercury. Mercury can't speak and he's out of bounds, by the way in Donald Trump's natal chart, mute and out of bounds Mercury, which is behind the ascendant, 
not speaking well to how he can communicate with the public at all, not speaking very well to well-behaved speech. It is also, as we all know, square his Neptune, which is why he does indeed tell untruths quite often, right? At historic proportions, he confabulates or whatever, he makes it up on the fly. That's a natal predisposition, but he can get into hot water because it's conjunct the South Node in the solar return and the lot of fortune, which brings the vagaries of fate, uh, ups and downs and success. Therefore, it can be some lie he tells or some speech in untruth that really gets him in a difficult condition around a wound and to his leadership. And this is the fourth house of the of the stumping, the trumping going on the road, speaking on TV shows, magazines, and media stories. That's where all of the promotional campaign publicity would happen is in his third house. And yet we see a chironic wound from his natal chart and a loss. We connect it to the untruths that are spoken. Could just be a really bad debate coming up and it really can sink him this year. And there is a debate now in September with Kamala Harris, I believe, coming through the sky with CNN maybe. And so keep that in mind. And if we were to look at the idea of his opponents, his opponents in the solar return chart are Saturn, right? Saturn is the opponent, anyone he's running against, you know, fighting against to win the election. <clears throat> and Saturn is up here with Neptune in Pisces. And the relationship of that Saturn in this chart, which can be the planetary representative of a, an opponent for him, right? Someone who may take the prize away from him. Is, is in a situation here at 19 degrees of the sign of Pisces, right? That puts it in a very difficult square relationship to the sun in the solar return chart. Look, the sun is a part of Donald that is the one that won the election. It's this leader, solar figure, king-like quality, you know, in his natal chart, in his 11th house, now in the house of jails or hospitals, squaring the planet that represents an opponent. That does not bode well for Donald Trump at all, at all, at all. It's pretty darn not good. Now, I am going to move us into the, the idea here of perfecting the months. I'm going to get rid of the mess because we're going to finish up. It's just, I'm going to do a lot of charts on this one. I know if he's actually making it to the end or if he quits, right? If he quits his, his candidacy. But if he doesn't quit and he's just keeping on, keeping on, let's perfect the solar return like we did for the winning year of 2016 from both the sun and the ascendant of the solar return. So we perfect from the ascendant and we ask ourselves what's going on. This is June and this is July, right? In July, he was nearly assassinated. This is the month of July, based on his whole sign, June month. We can see the sun god. So he had a sun god element. He was standing at the top of the sky like the sun god. If we want to overlap that, which might be really handy. So let me just do that. With his natal chart, we can see that the sun god in his solar return, which represents the month of July here, is conjunct or not conjunct, overlapping Pluto, the god of death, and Mars, the shooter. So a shooting of a sun god. That's a story that's going on for him in July. And it's connected to later in the month, you know, 26 degree shooter. So it was on the 15th, but, you know, Pluto's at the 10th degree between the 10th and the, and the 25th or 6th of the month. He may be in physical harm's way if he's doing sun god things. And what is Apollo in the house of speech? Donald Trump was speaking publicly and he was a sun god and Mars shooter Pluto death was coming at him basically. That's basically what happened in July. So we see that narrative here, right? What happens in the month of August, which I'm doing this recording on August the 4th, we see the Democratic National Convention occurs around here, you know, in this zone here, where he's got his moon at 14th degree. That's also the Mars-Jupiter conjunction. It's going to happen in a real-time sky uh, in the middle of the month, and he'll be connected to his moon. And the Mars-Jupiter conjunction in the real-time sky is happening in Gemini, in Donald Trump's house of isolation, hidden enemies, and hospitals in his solar return chart. Not in his natal chart. In the natal chart, it's his 11th house, but solar return placement is very, very weak. I'd say he's out traveling. He's trying to meet the people, reach the people. Sun, moon is like we the people, talk to the people. Um, it's a square 
uh, the moon is square, the sun, but not quite perfectly. So it's almost a first quarter moon. It's a waxing crescent. So the waxing crescent moon, it's extremism energy. It's like going to extremes to get something accomplished just before the quarter moon. There's an energy of extremism. So he's out there in extremist mode, connecting to lunar people, the people traveling, 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 hitting the media, hitting the newspapers and magazines, speaking on, on podcasts. He's very busy publicizing himself and his campaign, as you would expect in the month of August, ruled by Mercury. Mercury in the house of hidden enemies. Again, is that a good thing, a bad thing? Who knows? I have no idea. And then we move to the month of August. So June, July, August, September, perfecting from the ascendant. So September, there's some losses for him, a chironic wound that's part of the fate, fates and fortunes of his life. And a lot of fortune can be about your health. And it's in the dark midnight hour of the sky, things to do with his private life. And it's connected to a chironic wound and a Neptune problem. Well, I'm not going to go into it, but he does have like a lot of poison on his Neptune. And Neptune represents also things that can poison you like drugs and stuff and cause problems. And it is like, if he's going to face a health challenge, it may be natural, may not be natural. Don't tell me, don't tell the three letter agencies about me. It looks like he could run into problems in September. Okay. So this may be health problems because Venus rules this and she's in the house of hospitals conjunct his son. So news of health problems that send Donald Trump to the hospital may be a story in the first couple of weeks of September this year. This is October before the election. It's a big empty space. Not much happening in this sky, in the natal, in the solar return chart or the overlapping natal stories. He looks like he might be hunkered down at home at the bottom of his natal chart, maybe because he's not doing well. All right. Ruled by a Mars in the sign of his exile. So it's a weak month for him in October when he should be gearing up for success. Is he even in the race by October? And then in November, he perfecting from the ascendant. Well, South Node Moon, popular appeal with the people he loses it. That's his natal moon that also has angel on it. That's natal moon that also has Eros on it. But the sixth house is a very weak house for his November. If we perfect from the ascendant, it's a super bad place to be the house of bad fortune and the moon in his natal chart in his fifth house of sexual and romantic love and children is overlapping. And there may be some difficult circumstances regarding his romantic pastimes, present or future or his children or just six houses illness. Again, is he out of the running? Did he get knocked off the race in September? Maybe he's ill and maybe he's not in the race at all. But if we perfect from his son and we go from here, this is June and this is July. In July, we're just overlapping this, perfecting from the sun, which represents career, where what we perfect on the ascendant represents his personhood. So his career in the month of July, what's going on in terms of this year's solar return chart? We know he was attempted assassination, but he's getting publicity of some sort. Of course, it's, it's Mercury. Even though he's in a mute sign, even though he's out of bounds, he's getting a lot of press about nearly being shot and his ear being clipped, right? And um, and then the ear belongs to the second house, right? <laughs> when we did the perfection from the ascendant, his head, his ear could be here. Um, <clears throat> again, we have a stellium energy of, of Cancerian. Mercury, Venus is publicity when they're together. Saturn, something to do with, oh, traditional media. I mean, he got a lot of traditional media coverage, uh, which was unusual for him uh, because it was a, a world event that demanded attention one way or the other. But when we keep perfecting from the sun, which represents his career and purpose, and we just go through the story that way, this is a month of here. This is a month, your 12th house month. This is the month of January. This, I mean, June, this is July. This is August. I'm talking to you in August. This is what he's doing perfected from his career. He's busy right? He's got like speaking, he's talking, he's, you know, uh, getting uh, some action going with his uh, solar force, uh, his sun god leader. Um, he's really sun godding up, all right? That's what he's trying to do anyway, in the month of August. 
And we do have a retrograde Mercury here and he may change his mind and unspeak something like, I don't like JD Vance anymore. So forget it. Um, he's going to ask JD Vance to un unsubscribe from the job so that he can choose. Hopefully Tulsi Gabbard would have been the smartest move to begin with, but smart moves are not, not, not necessarily something Donald Trump can do when he's being handled and manhandled and managed by other people. And can he make a smart choice on his own? I'm sure he could. I mean, he runs on grade eight instinctual beastery. Like he's like a, he's a grade eight kid. He's in grade eight. Honestly, I don't know what happened when he was in grade eight, but he's like 12 or 13 years old or something. And he runs on those playground instincts, really. Yeah, I mean, you can call him a bully if you want. And he may have had an inclination to pull out a woman, right? But he didn't know Kamala was going to rise to the leadership position. And so if he chooses Tulsi as his running mate and say he gets ill, I wonder if Tulsi will go head to head with Kamala and if that's even legal. So we'll see what happens. Moving onward, just making stuff up, guys. This is his... This is his month of August and perfecting from the sun. This is his month of September where he has a moon in Virgo health matters connected to the IC, the home. Again, what's going on in September? Perfect from his son, perfect from his ascendant. It looks like he could be dealing with some health matters. It really does. Okay. And then we move here, September, I mean, August, no, September, October, November. And then the election month. Let me get rid of that hot mess. And then the election month is here from perfecting from his career son. It's a fifth house month. It's not a weak house. It's a Dharma house. It's an okay house. It's not at the top of the sky. It's a bottom in this, the lunar sphere, not very public. And so his solar progression goes here in the month of November and his progression of his ascendant goes into the sixth house on bad fortune in November. That's his ascendant progression. All said and done, both are not very good. You can see there's nothing happening here. His progressed son from the solar return is on the IC, the dungeon, the midnight hour, the basement of his chart. It looks like he's not even in the election by the time we get to the end of September. So let's see if I'm right. I don't think he's going to win if he does pull through and he's there to the end. That is not a winning solar return chart. Now, if I was to pull out his solar arcs, his secondary progressions, his Adako Elisi, his distribution through the bounds, these tools you can learn with me in my advanced class next January, you'd be going like, holy man, this guy's not going to win. So just that aside, you know, I don't think Donald Trump can beat a woman whether it's Tulsi who takes his job. Like, I just think that the world is waiting for a woman to be the president of the United States. It's time. It's ridiculous that it hasn't been. We had Margaret Thatcher in England forever. It's like the United States is lost in the handmaid's tail time or something. And also using the 13 keys by Alan Rickman, the university professor, just because they got to keep, keep the key of contest because Kamala Harris is now the candidate. You know, um, the number of keys the Democrats have is way better than the Republican party at this point in the never failed to predict an election except for the Gore Bush hanging Chad problem. And Alan Lickman, the professor, I think at American University, suggests that that was the election that belonged to Gore. And actually, there was evidence that they found more votes for him in Florida that weren't counted. So at this point, unless we have a major scandal, a recession that's declared, and there's a couple other keys to be lost, go to war, I think. It looks like right now the Democrats will win the election. So, and that at this point it's Kamala Harris who's who's in the lead. We'll see where that goes. I'll do a separate Kamala video. Now, if you are disappointed because you believe Trump's going to be the winner, one of my astrology colleagues of uh, uh, does Vedic astrology, Joni Petrie, met her. I met Joni Petrie at NCGR in September of 2019, before the pandemic. All that wavy, big lion hair, and I went to talk to her after her talk, and I said, "Are you like a Leo somewhere in there, sun or moon?" She goes, "Yes, <laughs> I believe it's a Leo Vedic moon." But look at that hair. She says Trump's going to win, but she is pro-Trump, and I think that she can't see clearly because of her bias. And I, I see that with all kinds of tarot readers in all the other elections where, you know, the astrology says, no, I see it with other astrologers. The bias is going to skew how they see what they want. And what do you call it? Cherry pick or selection bias for the good things in the chart to prove their candidate will, will win. And I'm not seeing it that way because as much as I try to tell you, I'm not political. I don't let, I don't vote in the United States. I never have. I, I have opinions, but I don't actually have a political bias of any great degree. I am your classic centrist. I love liberal policies of fiscal conservatism. 
I mean, conservative policies and I love liberal policies about like rights for women for reproduction, for example. So here you go. All right. Ciao, everybody. Have a good day. Hope this video was useful.